Hello everyone, and I want to welcome you to a beautiful Sunday afternoon filled with oil painting. This is John, your humble host, and I'm glad you can make it. Uh, today, as you can see, we're going to do our normal 16 by 20 canvas. It's a back staple stretch canvas from Blick. It's one of their value packs, and it's actually a pretty good canvas. We got our two inch gesso brush today. Usually we've been using a one and a half, but I figured what the hell, we'll do a two inch today. And I'm going to answer a question that I've seen on the internet all over the place. Can you mix conventional oil paint with water mixable oil paint? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to show you now. I've got Daniel Smith water mixable oil paint and I have Georgian oil paint. I've got like three colors of Georgian and I've got the rest of Daniel Smith. I got a few more colors on the palette than normal just because I wanted to put them all together. But um, let me show you my palette. It's a lot more than I usually do. I usually like to go five colors in white, but I've got uh, this, this, let's see, titanium white, cad yellow light, alizarin crimson, uh, French ultramarine, my runny, cerulean blue, and then I've got dioxazine purple, um, viridian, ivory black, burnt sienna. So the burnt sienna, the ivory black, and I think those are the two Georgians. Everything else is water mixable. So let's get our medium. Oh, and I'm also using the water mixable uh, medium. This is the Daniel Smith water soluble fast drying linseed oil. So that's my medium with the Georgian oils. So let's go with our Viridian and a little bit of ivory black. We got our medium on the brush. And we're gonna start like we always start. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try something a little different today. Um, normally I don't have anything in mind um, when I'm gonna start one of these things. Today I did a little bit. So what I wanna do, put a little bit more ivory black, a little black because I'm purple. I'm gonna have a waterfall here. Yes, I know I do a lot of waterfalls, but normally I have my land mass like that, which I'm going to probably do, and then my water, and then maybe zigzagging like that. And what I'm thinking about doing, because it was in my head last night, thinking about uh, what I was going to do today, possibly. I knew I was going to do the mixture of the conventional and water mixable oils, and I was thinking about the composition, which normally I don't, but my head's been going all over the place lately. So I'm going to go like this. Okay. And then what I think I'm going to do... A lot of purple in there too, which is just fine. Water is whatever is reflecting, so I'll put some purple some places. I think I'm gonna put the water like that. Ah! Use the conventional way using the brush for a moment. There we go. Something like that. And then what I was going to do, ivory black, burnt sienna, I'm going to make this. Gotta have something that keeps the water from spilling over. Okay. Shave that off. Okay, now I want to get another mountain range in here. This is going straight to the top. Okay, 
Now, this one is going to be forward. This one, I'm going to have some grass in there. So what I'm going to do with that, I'm only going to bring it to about here. Cleaned up a little bit before I put a sky in. Ah, there goes my canvas. And just so you know, I, you don't have to worry about it. This looks nothing like what I had in my mind when I was thinking about my composition last night. There we go. Let me see what that looks like from the back. It's actually not that bad. The water, the waterfall, I've seen a lot of them in Glacier National Park where you're just driving, like going to the Sun Road and stuff, and you see water just spurting out of the middle of a mountain, and you have no idea where it's coming from, what's feeding it. That's what we're going to have here, folks. I have no idea where the hell this water's coming from. I just know it's coming out of the mountain into this, at the moment, Green River with a little purple in it. Okay, so we've got a reasonably pretty nice looking mess on here. So we're going to kind of go with that mess. Now, this one has a lot of brown and black in it, that brush. So I am not going to use that for my sky. It's got too much stuff in it. So I'm going to go with a little brighter sky. Let's go with some cerulean. I'm going to put some French ultramarine to darken it up a little bit. But uh, only in a couple places. It's going to be a lighter sky. It's going to mix them with this brown, black, purple mixture here when I get down close. And then here's a trick. If you got to really cut in close to stuff, Flip it over. Yes, you're allowed to do that. Matter of fact, you're allowed to do damn near anything you want. That's called artistic license, my oil painting friends. And if anybody tells you you can't, tell them to kiss your ass. You can do this, you can use a projector, whatever it takes to help you create the art you want to create. And yes, a projector is perfectly legal to get your sketch on if that's what you want to do. If you want to go the crazy route like me where you just kind of put stuff down that's also very fine to do but just because i create more than that doesn't make me any better that's just what i prefer i uh, don't like following rules in my personal life i've got to do it in my professional life at my job at home and when in my art especially i don't the hell with the rules i just want to have fun and I want to create what I consider beautiful art. And that's what I do. I'm having fun. I create what I think is beautiful art. Some people may not. I've sold enough of it to where I know people like it. Not everybody. Not everybody. There's some that thinks my stuff sucks, which is fine. There's no artist alive or dead that ever has everybody love their work. I love a lot of Thomas Kincaid stuff. A lot of people never liked Thomas Kincaid. They said he sold out. Well, man earned a living with his art. So did Da Vinci, so did Raphael, so did Degas, Vermeer, name it. It's a profession. Yes, it comes from your soul. Yes, it comes from your heart. Yes, you put everything you have into it. I, yes, I agree with all that stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to put your soul into something, you want to get paid for it. So that's what you can do. You don't want to have another job doing something you hate because you just want to create art for the, I don't believe in that purest shit. I want to teach people how to paint and I want to paint and I want to sell my work and I want to have a shit ton of fun doing it. Got a little bit of brown in my sky and I don't care. And if you followed my channel at all, you know, I don't. Because we can fix things if it needs to be fixed and other stuff, it doesn't need to be fixed. So what are we going to do now? Get the sky going. Let's go with the sky. Let's put in some clouds. I'm gonna put some. That's a little too much 
brown. It's gonna be some darker clouds. Wipe this off. And then a little bit more white for some highlights in places. There we go. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a wee bit, forgive my really bad Irish impersonation, but a wee bit. I'm losing crimson in there. Why? I have no idea. It just came to me. There. We got a blizzard and crimson in there. We got a little bit of brown. We got a little bit of white. We got a little bit of every damn thing. And I don't know if you lived under a rock your whole life, but I'm from the Midwest. And when we got a storm, we get all kinds of funky colors in the sky. And I kind of enjoy that stuff. Okay, now we're going to take our same one-inch brush we did the sky with. We're not going to clean it, just going to wipe it off to get all the big bulky stuff off. So we have a dirty brush, but it doesn't have any paint kind of dripping off it, any medium dripping off it. It's partially dry, if that's even a thing. Okay, we're going to do the clouds like we normally do. Just going to go up, start blending everything. Nice, very light touch. This is a darker sky than we normally do, but we've got a much lighter sky itself. So these clouds, being darker, will have a real nice contrast. Now I'm going to take and wipe off the paint that I just put on this brush. And we're going to go the other way. Just like they cut the grass at a baseball diamond. They always cut it one way and then cut it the opposite. Why? I have no idea. It looks cool. I don't know if it's worth it. I'm not a baseball purist. Although, my wife and I did go to a baseball game last night. It was a lot of fun. Her company had an outing at uh, the baseball game for the Joliet Slammers. It's a uh, minor league team. They're in the Frontier League. So they're not affiliated with any Major League Baseball team, but they can get picked up by Major League Baseball teams and brought into their farm system. And they're professional, but a bunch of kids, you know, 22-year-olds. I haven't been to a baseball game in forever because Chicago is just not like it was when I grew up there. And it's a lot more dangerous than it ever used to be, so we haven't gone to a ball game. Plus getting to Wrigley and Old Comiskey. Yeah, I know it's called something else, but it still always be the Comiskey to me. It's just a pain in the ass to get to nowadays. So when she had this, she asked me if I'd mind to go. I said, no, I haven't seen a baseball game in forever. It was 25 minutes from the house, free parking, and it was a lot of fun. The park was nice. It wasn't huge. You know, capacity would probably be 3,500, I'm guessing. They lost, unfortunately, the Slammers. They played Florence Yalls or something. But it was a lot of fun. And the ticket prices for buying in advance. Check this shit out. 15 bucks a ticket. And you don't have to pay to park. I told Laura... And she agreed, hey, we can do this date night stuff with a baseball game, you know, a few times a year without any problem. That's just awesome. You know, 30 bucks for two people for tickets. The food was reasonable and it was good. You know, the hot dog took up the whole bun, tasted good. You know, drinks were reasonable. It wasn't $30 for a watered down beer. So it's like, I had a lot of fun. It was a nice ball game. A nice park, 25 minutes from home, free parking. I told Laura, that's the cat's ass. And she agreed. She had a good time, too. So if you live anywhere near a minor baseball team and their park and stuff, check them out. Because I tell you what, we had a lot of fun with those kids. They had the weird little antic things in between innings, half innings and stuff, like you see in uh, some of the movies with the minor leagues. It was a lot of fun. So anyways, back to our sky and the clouds that are starting to annoy me. It's not coming out exactly the way I want. I got too much red in places. So I'm going to counteract it with a little bit more highlight. And then I got to move it around. This is another thing about oil painting that's so much fun and I like. With acrylics, it's hard unless you spritz it on a regular basis and you use... Uh, you know, some of the mediums that keep it from drying so damn quick. 
but under normal conditions it dries much too quick to do what I'm doing here and I'm just trying to improve here it was it came out too dark just a bit too dark I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit I'm gonna use a bigger brush I'm gonna use instead of a one inch I'm gonna use a one and a half and I think that'll help get where I want it to go so if you will excuse me a minute, I gotta go to my drawer and get it. I didn't expect to be needing the one and a half inch of this painting. And that was my fault for not preparing. Okay, really light. Lighter than before. Just you only diffuse the bulkiness of the color that I just put down. There we go. to cut on there and get rid of it and go in the opposite direction I can tell right now this is getting better sometimes you got to do something more than once to get it the way it, get it to look on canvas the way you have it in your head and um, a lot of people get frustrated with that and I used to also so anybody that gets frustrated with it not coming out the way you exactly want I empathize because I went through that for many years and then after a while I found out sometimes it was better than what I envisioned, and other times it just taught me how to do stuff. Either way, if you learn from it, it's never a bad thing. Now I'm starting to like this. Yeah, now I'm starting to like it. Now my voice starts getting real low like this. Now you know I like it. Wolfman Jack. Anybody that's younger than 55 years won't know who Wolfman Jack was, but since the demographics on my YouTube channel show nobody under the age of 55 watches my channel anyway, everybody probably knows who Jim Wolfman Jack is, or was. There, I can do with that. Okay, now I'm going to do something a little different than I normally do. I don't do, rather. I got this as too much of a line. Nature doesn't have a lot of straight lines, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Do the same thing I was, but just a little, little heavier pressure. There we go. There we go. I usually don't take this much time on a sky, but this one was being a bit of a pain in the ass. Okay. I'm just going to take this one and a half, some white. I like highlights in the sky a little bit. I don't like it all to be one color. Even though a lot of times it is, I still don't like that. My preference with the sky is to have multiple colors. Once in a while, I'll have a straight, boring sky because that's not anything I want to look at. It's I got other elements, but uh, the sky is important in this painting, but it's not the most important by far but I still want it to look right. There we go. A little bit of puffy stuff here and there. There we go. Let me step back. Oh yeah, that's much better. That's all over the place now, which is what I wanted. Okay, now that fiasco is done. Uh, so I'm just gonna take my two inch brush get this ground in. So I'm gonna use some burnt uh, sienna and my Viridian green. See how beautiful that green is? Now Viridian is a horseshit color by itself. It really is. There's no use to it whatsoever by itself. As a color that you mix stuff with, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. And you've got so many things you can do with Viridian. Just remember, out of the tube, and a lot of beginners, you know, when they get colors and stuff, they like to rely on out of the tube and they're a little hesitant to mix. Don't be. If it looks like junk, you wipe it off. You've seen me do that. Wipe it off and do something else. Yeah, nothing to lose and everything to gain. Like I said, if it looks like crap, 
you wipe it off, you start over again, and you learn. You'd be surprised, well maybe you wouldn't, to my haphazard approach. But once upon a time, I wanted to make every brush stroke count, I wanted to be perfect, and I wanted my stuff to look like it's never, nobody's ever seen before. And I tried to be so perfect, my paintings looked stale, they looked flat, they looked like hell. They were absolute garbage. And I almost gave up painting. And then luckily, I saw a couple people, Stuart Davis, Davies, uh, and Dennis Sheehan. I mentioned them before. And I saw their approach. And then I started kind of getting a little bit more rejuvenated. And I absolutely love painting again. But I got depressed painting-wise, not in life, just painting-wise. And I couldn't get anything to look the way I wanted it to. It's a very bad feeling. Okay, I'm using the same colors I did for the mountains. But I'm just adding titanium white to it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a lot of trees here. Pine trees, fir trees, whatever you want to call them. They're my trees. And basically, I'm gonna have a forest. And what I'm gonna do is that whole forest is gonna go right from the water's edge. So I'm going down here. A little bit more of this. blending these edges together. This is something that's not necessary because I'm going to have a lot of foliage covering it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little bit of highlights on the top and then my um, uh, shadows and stuff. But it's not going to be as much as this one. This one I'm going to have a little bit more. I want this to be forward, this to be a little further back. And this is going to be the background that you're going to see in between the trees. So as I tap in the trees like this, it's not going to I'm not going to tap in trees that cover the canvas 100%. So there's going to be gaps. And those gaps, you're going to see this, like you're going into a forest. You know, these are going to be like foothills for this range. And what I'm thinking about doing is having some here that are a little more faint. And then that's why I got this split here. See how this is more green and this is more brown? So I'm going to have one row starting here going up. They're going to be a lot more faint than this one that's going to go up. And then that way you're gonna see the, the differences. Okay, so now that I'm through yapping, <laughs> you wish. I love talking if you haven't figured that out. There we go. I'm gonna scrape some of this off because it's a lot thicker than I wanted. Yeah, that's a little bit more like I wanted. I gotta take the old knife. Oh, that's actually looking exactly like I wanted. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> the late, great Bob Ross would say, happy accident. And I would say, I miss him. I don't paint like him at all, but I love this style. Okay, now we're going to go a little bit of dioxazazine purple. I hope I'm saying, I know I'm not, dioxazine purple. A little bit more white than purple, actually a lot more white than purple. Because I don't want my mantis to be, the mountains to be purple mad, mountains majesty. Perfect for a song, but not for my mountains. Not here anyway, they just wouldn't work. Okay, that color's coming out like crap. A little bit more blue. Okay. And now we got the purple. There we go. There we go. That's what I was looking for. And if anybody that's watched my videos knows, that's my wife's bird, Raphael. And yes, I did name him after my favorite artist of all time, Raphael Sanzio. Why is Rafael Sanzio my favorite artist? I don't know. 
There's something about his art that I just it mesmerizes me. And when you get mesmerized by somebody's art, chances are pretty good. That's the art you should be following. And the thing of it is, I never tried to mimic him. I There's nothing we do that's similar from everything I've read about him. And uh, I would just be embarrassing myself if I even attempted it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like my art. I think I give my clients a very good product. And, um, you know, I make everything with light fast and um, archival materials and everything else. But Raphael was not anybody that, uh... oh my goodness, that looks better than I thought it was going to. And I was going to put a little bit more of the highlight on, but since I don't want those as my front mountains, I'm going to leave that part alone. I'm just going to use a knife with nothing on it. Just to... Okay, see what I'm doing is I'm just taking the sides. I'm going to do a little bit of bulky paint. I'm going to blend that out here shortly. to make the blend look a little bit more seamless. That's all I'm doing. I'm trying to make it look a little bit more natural. So I'm going to everything together, but like I said, I started with no paint on the... See, that's what I'm talking about. That looks a lot better. Now, let me see how it looks from your vantage point. There you go. Painting's done. Quit while you're ahead, right? Okay. Now, I gotta take a little hake brush. I don't use these a lot, okay? It's a little hake brush. Hake brushes are used a lot in watercolors. What it is, it's extremely soft bristles. I think they use goat hair a lot. They shed like a son of a gun, especially with the oil paint as it drags. So they're a pain in the ass at times, but see how that's all messed up there? It makes it, I'm gonna try and do this without getting in the way. I'm barely touching the canvas. And the only thing I want to do is just blend out those bumps that were there. There we go. There we go. Looks a lot better. Voila! Don't even know if that's the word. Yeah, it is. Got to be, right? I don't know. Don't know, don't care. I'm having a great time. Had a great weekend with my wife. We usually do. We've been married 23 years, been together 27 years. She's been a pain in my ass once in a while. I've been a pain in hers once in a while. Overall, we get along really good. We have a lot of similar interests, so we enjoy each other's company. And after this many years, I wouldn't trade her in for anybody. So I'm pretty much stuck. And that's a good thing. Who was it? Huey Lewis. I'm happy to be stuck with you. That's the way it is with Laura and I. We're happy to be stuck with each other. Okay, so next thing I want to do. I'm not going to have a lot of green foliage or foliage in general going up this one. A little bit. Okay, a little bit, but not a lot. This one's going to have it in the bottom. I don't want to get rid of these highlights and shadows that are really nice. So the way this is going to work, let me get a brush to point it out. Down here, there's going to be some going up. Only going to be a, maybe a little bit higher than the waterfall start. Same thing over here, maybe up to this dip right here. And then that's going to be for that mountain. So I'm only going to have my big highlights here. Obviously I have the light source coming from the top left. So the top left will be highlighted to make it all even. So I'll put them here. I'm probably not going to put any more over here, maybe a little bit, because I'm going to have the trees blocking it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get some of this paint. Just 
make sure. Basically all I'm doing with this, getting some paint off. You're not gonna see it from a video, but I can see it raised up where there's more paint than there needs to be. Like down here, there's a puddle. Um, and you got to see it and you got to look for it and it just makes it easier to put other layers on, especially when I'm going to go with trees and stuff over there. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do right here with the trees. Now I'm going to take my one inch brush. I'm going to flatten out my bristles. I'm not using the medium for much now. Remember how we did the trees? We flatten the bristles first. Okay. And then we go into our stuff, our stuff, our paint. Yeah, I got purple on this brush. I'm aware of that. I don't care. I'm actually not going over blue sky. I'm going over everything else. So. Let's see how high I'm going to go up. Yeah, I'm going to go like that. Now this one, I'm going to cover everything with these taps of this like tan color because I want the green to be predominant, even though it's extremely faint. Okay. The reason for it is because it's a forest. And I know there's brown in the forest and tan and every other damn thing. But for me, I want this. Okay. Now this is what I was telling you about. Okay, this is going to be my background layer. Now I'm going to go down into this, which is where my foreground layer is going to be. And then I'll put the... Now this isn't showing exactly what I want right now. Let me see if it shows in the video. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, I don't want to make it any darker, only because it's going to ruin it, maybe. I don't know. I want you to be able to see this. You know what I'll do? I'll add a little bit of blue, because once I hit it with green, I mean with yellow, it'll go green, but the blue will help you see it. I at least want you to see the line. Because it it, it's important to see what I'm talking about of how you want the distance to be, okay? That's the big thing in painting is you need distance. And the blue is a receding color, but it also helps because it has beautiful grains to it. When you hit it with yellow, yellow ochre, raw sienna, name it. first level go right up to there there we go now this half is going to be with the other one so it doesn't matter as much yes shows up much better okay so once I put in the big trees with the one and a half inch brush and you've seen how I did it when I tap like this I'm not gonna cover this a little bit here, a little bit here. So I'm going to try to leave at least 60% of the mountains visible because I like the way those went, okay? I like the way they look. But I'm also not going to put, you know how I got this straight across to where it just blocks out behind it? I'm not going to do that when I put the other trees in. I'm going to leave gaps like I told you. And those gaps you're going to see inside here. So now I'm going to take my brush without adding paint and I'm just going to blend this down so there's no distinct line. Lines are good and bad in landscapes, and you gotta know where to use them and where not to use them. Okay, so. There we go. That works. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is the same thing here to here and here, so I can see where my highlights on here are gonna be. It's easier to do this first to gauge where I want my highlights, because like I said, 
excuse me, this is a further mountain than this. So this is a subdued highlight that's going to be a little bit thicker paint, a little bit more white in the paint, because I want this to look a little bit more forward. So the trees are going to be a little bit more subdued here than here. Not much, but a little bit more. So this is going to be thicker paint. It's going to be medium thickness on this line here. And I'm hoping that'll give it the impression of which is in front of what. So I'm going to go about this high. I don't think you can see this, but I can. And unfortunately, lock in all around this waterfall and I'm basically using a combination of Viridian and French Ultramarine. Like I said when I put the other stuff in and I hit in different areas with the uh, with the yellow that I'm going to be using it's going to show up real nice. Okay a little bit right above the waterfalls. So it looks like it's coming out of a forest. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, take my fan brush. Actually, the next thing I'm going to do is get a drink of my smoothie. Sometimes I talk so damn much, my um, throat gets dry. But... I actually love talking about painting and art and stuff. So I'm just gonna get this. I'm gonna make this a little thicker as I go. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Now, the next thing I want to do is wipe off the brush, but I'm not um, washing it. And I just want to take, blending this, remember this brown-black combination underneath is still wet. It's oil paint. So it's not going to dry that quick. And right now, I'm just going to put in the area where I'm doing the shadows. I'm just getting that Look, and then I'm going to put some blue French Ultramarine, my Diaxazine Purple, and I'm going to put in the shadows. Now, I didn't have to do that first. I just like seeing where I'm doing everything. Because like this one, I am going to go over the highlights one more time because I don't want them, I want them to be darker. More saturated here than here. There we go. There we go. I'm still going to use the same brush, even though I've got purple and French ultramarine on it. I don't care. I like the way it looks. I'm going to tap a little bit in. This is part of what I told you, I like the thicker paint to be pronounced. I don't always use taps as fully as uh, highlights once in a while. For some reason, this one's calling out to me to do it. Okay. I'm going to treat this one just like I did the clouds in the sky. I'm going to do it similar to what I did here with the palette knife, but instead of kind of putting a lot of pressure down to just kind of subdue it and blend it, I'm going to take it like I did the clouds, nice and light, just to break up some of the big pieces of paint. That's it. Barely touching it. Wipe 
off the excess paint. And this is all trees anyway here. Over here too. So I'm going to reestablish the tree line with my Viridian and French Ultramarine. And yes, there is a difference between Ultramarine Blue and French Ultramarine Blue. I have no idea what it is. Um, I just like the French Ultramarine better. I wish I had the technical specs for you on why it is, but uh, I don't. There we go. Okay. I know this is a lot of boring, boringness to you. Boringness, is that a word? Um, but now all our, what they call the ugly stage or the awkward stage of our painting is pretty much over. Now we're gonna be basically adding thick paint, highlights, the waterfall, so the less part of it is gonna be fun. The first 41 minutes, I apologize. If it wasn't exactly what you were looking for. But you have to have a process and you got to go through this stuff. Okay, so we're going to go Viridian and Ivory Black. And we're just going to be tapping in our fir trees. And it's probably even amounts of Viridian and the Ivory Black. I usually use Payne's Gray, but the set I have comes with uh, Ivory Black and not Payne's Gray. And Ivory Black, it works good. I prefer the Payne's Gray because it's a dark blue. Um, and blue is obviously a landscape color. And yes, I just gobbed it on there. I want some thicker than others. I don't want everything to look the same. Sometimes it's hard to do because as humans, we're programmed to have everything look the same. And we're, you know, programmed for symmetry and stuff like that. And sometimes it's hard to get away from that. I know it is for me at times. But you do your best to do it and you will. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is take the same brush. I'm gonna tap in right here by the water line. And the water line will butt right up to the bottom of the falls itself. There we go. Okay. I'm not gonna take any paint off of there uh, because I'm gonna use that same brush over here. I better not be getting paint on my new shirt. My wife will have my ass. Okay, I'm just taking a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm getting all of this. I don't want a pasture, but I do want a little bit of grass right here. I don't want the trees going right into the water, so to speak. So this is gonna be my land. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Um, yeah, I think so. I'll get the trees in first. Using the same mixture. Excuse me. Okay. You're not going to see it all. Because uh, the background is so damn dark. And I apologize for that. You have to take my word for it. Same mixture, same everything. Now, the difference is I'm putting thicker paint on, as you can see here. And I'm going to highlight these 
a lot more than the other ones. These are a lot thicker. I'm not gonna change brushes. I would use that same two inch brush. Would have been a would have been a disaster. Okay, so I wish you could see it here in person because it does look very good. Not tapping, you know, pat myself on the back or anything like that. It just it looks like I'm explaining it. It's just hard to see in the damn video. Video's come a long way, but it still hasn't been able to show. Well, you can see it a little bit. Okay, so first thing I want to do, take this one, the water line right up to the waterfalls, and take my brush and push it back just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I told you I don't like lines, I don't like symmetry, and I just put one in from side to side. It's not going to stay a straight line. There's going to be little bushes and stuff that's going to kind of... It'll be up and down. Not quite like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but it'll be up and down. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, take my two-inch brush, wipe it off, not clean it off. That's when I'm going to start with the Kid Yellow Light. I'm going to put it thicker here, but I'm going to blend it in by tapping it to where I don't have a lot of yellow by itself. It's going to be a nice brighter green. And then here, I'm going to use the same thing, but not as much yellow. And this is going to be a little bit more subdued. Most of these are going to have the highlight, and only some of these are going to have the highlight. And then you'll see the, the difference. So all this excess paint, we're just going to wipe off. Like I said, though, we're not going to wash the brush. No need to at this time. No need to at this time. Okay. You believe... This week is the last week of June for 2024. It's amazing how fast time goes. The year is half over after uh, this time next week. I think the first is either Monday or Tuesday. So it's amazing how fast time goes. And it's funny too because my dad always told me the older you get the quicker it goes. Once again, he was right and I was wrong. Okay, so... Let's do the yellow thing. We'll start right here. So I'm going to keep going in. And I'm going to hit damn near every one of them. Okay, here's one side of the waterfall. Consider yourself lucky. I still haven't been able to figure out how to talk while concentrating. So when I'm concentrating like this, you get a reprieve from my voice. You're welcome. A little bit more here. Now what I'm going to do is wipe off the brush, and I'm going to show you what happened. Here's obviously the kid light, kid yellow light. Now here's the mixture I had from it, but I was taking it straight from here. This was twice the size that lump, and that's why you see so much yellow. Now for these, I'm just going to take it straight from here where it's already green, so that way I'm not going to have the bright yellow on it. See yeah, how that's just green? And I'm also going to blend that in a little bit more as we go. And it's not going to be all of them. I'm going to pick and choose here. 
It's not going to go all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. Well, the tops, yeah, because that's the lightest area. Ah, too much paint. Doggone it. Get off of there. There we go. Okay. Now wipe it off the brush. And I'm using my good old fan. Make sure it's wiped off. Don't need to clean it. And over here, I'm just gonna tap a little bit. These highlights to be a little highlights to be a little bit brighter. I'm not going to tap a lot. This side, on the other hand, I'm going to tap the shit out of them. I don't know if that's a technical term, tap the shit out of them, but you get my idea. I don't want these to be as bright as the ones on the other side. I want to see some green here. I want to see some color, but I want that to be much brighter than here. Let's stand back and see how that looks. Yep, I can deal with that. I don't know if that's a technical artist term either. I can deal with that. But I've used that phrase since, shit, since I had hair. That's a long time ago. Okay. So the next thing I wanna do is put in some bushes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our one inch brush. And we're gonna put in Viridian and Ivory Black. And we're gonna tap right on to what we had. And we're gonna make some shrubbery. Over there we're not. Okay. So, the next thing we're gonna do Go right into our green mixture. Flatten those bristles a little bit more. Now, I'm going to try this color out for a change. This is going to be a little cad yellow light, a little bit of burnt sienna, and a little bit of titanium white. What I want to do is break up the green. Green is my favorite color. And if I had my way, I'd probably do nothing but monochromatic green paintings. Well, maybe not. But uh, I use any color you gotta break up a little bit. Titanium white. 
titanium white and it helps. And some of it a little darker here. There we go. Okay, so now, like I said, once you see this video and it's, you know, you blow it up on say a decent sized monitor, TV, whatever you're watching it on, you're gonna see how that and the brighter here pushes these back and how that highlight is much brighter than this. So it makes the appearance look like this is a little bit behind, not a lot, you know, this isn't, thousand miles away otherwise there'd be no highlight okay it'd just be a real subdued color with a lot of well not a lot but with blue in it to recede so this is you know you could throw a baseball from one to the other but I wanted to show which was further and which wasn't I didn't want it straight line across of everything being on the same plane if that makes any sense I wanted to have a little bit of variety okay so at this point in time we are going to do waterfall. Right here. There we go. Now I gotta get. bright greens in there, yellows and everything else. Good. The waterfall is not completely straight across. At the top, I like having a little variety sometimes. Sometimes I have them straight. But now I've got the waterfall down. That high waterfall is going to have some stuff happening. And now I'm going to have some other stuff happening. And this is just to taste. You don't want to overdo it, okay? But you do want movement. Ooh, way too much paint. And a trick, okay? You see how nice this looks, how it's broken up? That is an awesome effect for water. And what you do is you just, instead of, I started putting these in like this, okay? Where the bristles are like this. Now you want to flatten the bristles. Uh, like that and then go across and then you want to do it lightly so it breaks like that see how that breaks and then what you do is you just put a bunch of these in and then you take your other bristle brushes with clean water I'm um, not water with uh, clean on it and then you um ah and you do what we did with like the clouds and everything else, you um, smooth it out where you want it. Keep it rough where you want it and smooth where you want it. Okay, you notice I'm taking different tops, different bottoms, different swells, and I'm putting in the rough water. It's a decent sized waterfall. So it's gonna have, you know, a decent amount of motion. The further away it gets, the less motion it's gonna have. I mean, it's still gonna be moving, but it's not gonna be, you know, 
rip currents. But the closer you are to it, a little rougher the water is going to be. And I'm going to put a little bit more water on here. Towels already got to re, re stuck up. Okay, a little bit of blue. There we go. A little bit more white with the green in it. Quite thick. Almost like I put it out with a knife. I want the impression of a lot of water coming down this thing. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, I can deal with that. Actually, part of me saying I can't <sighs> scrape it off. I will not edit this out. I refuse to actually. And the reason I refuse to is everybody has a right to see that regardless of how many times you've done a painting, how many times you've done a waterfall, how many times anything, shit happens. I just tried to fix it and I went overboard and it just looked like crap. Much better. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta scrape it off and try it again. And that's what I just did. And there's nothing wrong with it. That doesn't make you a bad artist, that doesn't make you pathetic, that doesn't make you anything except smart. Okay? You're looking at your painting as you're going objectively and you're saying, you know, that just don't look right. And you're gonna do something about it. Don't take it personal. Only thing I want to do again with my knife, I want to get this top line. I'm going to make that one straight across. And then I want to make it green. There we go. Okay. Now we gotta finish the water. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the clouds, same thing we did with up here. This brush already has the white on it from doing that. And I can see some brush here that wanna come out. Okay, so a lot of this rough stuff here, I just wanna move. Diffuse it. Okay, I guess that's a better word, diffuse. Over here, I don't. Over here, wipe off the brush. I want this a little calmer. So I'm gonna wipe off all the paint that I just put on here from brushing it. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do with this in a minute, I'm gonna put in a little bit more blue. Put it in these areas. I'm just picking and choosing where I'm going here.
See, this is the part of oil painting, and any painting really, that's really a bitch. And that is trying to teach this. Okay, this that I'm doing right now is all feeling and experience. Okay, that's all it is. It's impossible to kind of quantify exactly what the hell I'm doing. And it's all by feel and look from what I have experience with and stuff, okay? And I guess the only way I can explain this is obviously there's going to be a lot of green in the water because water reflects its surroundings and there's a shit ton of green, okay? So we know that. Obviously it's going to be much rougher here than here, but it's still going to be moving. The other thing is I had so much green here. This is going to be covered by the grass coming up. But I had so much green here that I needed to add a little bit more blue and then a little bit less movement. Okay, so you notice how these now, you know, that looks like real choppy water. And this is a little smoother, okay? A little smoother. And a little bluer. A little bit of cerulean and a little bit of French ultramarine. So it's, it's got its ways. Along the shoreline, it's going to be a little rougher as they go. In some areas, it's going to swell. It's not, like I said, this is just... This part of it is just all feeling and experience. I'm trying to quantify exactly what the hell I'm thinking on something like this is damn near impossible. So, go by what you think looks right and feels right to you. By the time you're at this point in your painting, regardless of how long you've been painting or not, You've got a picture in your head of how you think it's going to turn out or how you want it to turn out. Okay. How does it look? And try to mimic what's in your head onto the canvas. And granted, I know that's much easier said than done. I struggle with that still and I've been painting forever. But try to do that and you're going to eventually get that feel. Okay? You're going to get that touch where your inner artist, your soul, I guess, that you're painting from, and your hand and your eye are all three on the same sheet of music. And once that occurs, then you can kind of feel your way around it. Like I said, I apologize, I can't get any more technical than that, but that's the best I can do. And since I like to teach, it's a, it hurts, but I can't give you an exact, okay, you're looking for this and doing this. I can't do it with that. Okay, now we're gonna make our flowers and reeds and we're gonna do our base first, which you've probably seen me do a thousand times. Although I haven't had a thousand videos, so that might make it difficult. Okay, all that white in here will go away. I'm gonna keep putting black and viridian on it, but it's, it's the uh, white caps from the water. But I'm gonna keep going over it. Get it dark because you have to have dark to see the light. There we go. See how that goes? At this point in time, I'm using Viridian, Ivory Black, French Ultramarine. If it's dark on my palette, I'm using it. The only thing I'm not using is the Alizarin because that's where my flowers are going to be. My flowers are going to be Alizarin and they're going to be orange and they're going to be. Not quite in your face, but they're going to be nice. Okay. I'm just touching and bringing it up, and as I get to the top, kind of go off to give that little feel to it, that look to it. Okay. So now, wipe off the brush from that heavy stuff. I'm going to go into my green and my yellow and all this other stuff. All this other stuff. And I'm going to start putting in my grass. And I'm just taking the brush, overhand, grip, and I'm just tapping my grass in. I've got way more mountains than I was originally expected, so I'm not going to put rocks down here, which I do on a somewhat regular basis. It's just going to be all 
the pasture leading up to this waterfall river. I got a seat right there where I'm going to be painting it. Okay, now, just like the trees, you see all the yellow on it? Thick? Just keep tapping it. You got that wet, dark color underneath it, and look at all the beautiful green it shows. You want to leave some of the thick yellow here and there. You don't want it all to be uniform. My apologies, I had to get some more yellow out. So don't be afraid to uh, leave areas that are thick, areas that are not thick, and just, again, I can't say this enough. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. So just enjoy the process. And even enjoy the mess ups. I got news for you. I don't think anybody screwed up a painting more than me in my time that I've been painting. I mean, I messed them. Ooh, there was one. Oh my God. I, to this day, I stopped. I haven't done a uh, seascape yet because of it. I started out with, I was doing an underpainting and this is, God, six, seven years ago, maybe a little longer. And I had the waves and the movement of the water perfect. I, it was perfect. The problem I had was I couldn't finish it. And there was something about it. And I, to this day, I still don't know where I messed up, but it just turned out to be such an ugly painting when I was done. And when I was like 30% of the way in, I was like, Oh wow, I'm going to be a seascape artist. And I haven't tried to see seascape since. I sent a seascape since. Ooh, say that fast five times. Okay. Okay, so look at all the yellow that I've got that's really thick. And then the green that I've got in there. And then I've got some of the under painting all over the place you can see. That's what I'm talking about. You want variety. Go to any floor preserve, go to any nature preserve, go anywhere other than somebody's manicured backyard, and you're gonna see, and even that sometimes, depending on the time of the year, you're gonna see a bunch of variations of greens, yellows, rusty colors here and there. You can see all kinds of stuff. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we'll take out our Hobby Lobby 99 cent messed up brush that you can't use for anything but what I'm gonna use it for. Thick paint. And these are my flowers along the riverbank. I love flowers on the riverbank. I love flowers everywhere, actually. That's why all you people that live in a real cold climate that doesn't have a lot of summer, part of me is a little jealous because I can't have more winter and less spring and summer because I love flowers and everything else. You people that live in Alaska, North Dakota, Montana and stuff, I... Uh, you're a special type of person that I respect completely because I just couldn't handle that much winter. And you people seem to take it in stride and like I said, my hat's off to you. And normally I do wear a hat. I think, you know, when my wife and I retire, we're gonna probably move down to Florida where it's gonna be green most of the year. But uh, even like here now in the Chicago area, we've got a mini bl um, drought going in. I'm losing a fortune watering because Mother Nature's not doing it. And um, I'm doing it because I can't stand brown grass in June and July. Not here. But um, with climate change and everything else, guess what? Our summers are much hotter and much drier than they've ever been in the last several years. Always had a drought starting somewhere in the beginning of June and lasting most of the summer. And this shit happens. Okay, now let's just do some mixing on the on the canvas. And if you notice too, this is really thick paint I'm putting on. Now, everybody that's ever tried to paint, especially oils, has heard of the thing fat over lean. And I'm not gonna tell you it's a bunch of bullshit, because it's not. It's actually very legitimate. However, this is legitimate depending on how you paint. 
So if you paint in layers like the old masters did, okay, well, you know, shit, some of them had 20 layers of paint, glazes and everything else, then you want to do the fat over length. You have no choice. Okay, your painting will not last. If the outer dries faster than the inner colors, you know, closer to the canvas, wood, whatever you're painting on, it um, it'll crack. It'll just it'll be ugly. But when you do a la prima, or I think that's French for all at once, I believe. But a la prima is basically like we do our paintings, okay? All at once, one sitting, however you want to do that. Um, it doesn't really mean anything. And the reason is you're putting everything on at the same time. You know, everything is the same amount of everything. I had the lean mixture in the beginning only to sketch. It had nothing to do with anything else. But this painting is going to dry at the same rate because there are no layers. We may have layered stuff on top of stuff, but it was always layering wet paint on wet paint. It wasn't wet paint on dry paint. Okay, that's the thing I'm talking about. So when you see fat over lean, ignore it if you're doing a painting like this all at once. But if you do want to have layers that dry and add on, dry and add on, and so forth, then you must, must, must adhere to the fat over lean because it's crucial then. With a painting like this, not so much. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, now, one of the other things, too, that I like to do, just for a little bit of color harmony, and I've said this before, whatever I put in the foreground, especially with flowers, I like to add somewhere else. I don't like this green by itself. I'm going to add a little orange there. A little bit more of the alizarin. I love alizarin crimson. I get permanent alizarin crimson because regular alizarin crimson isn't permanent, but if you get the permanent one, it's a little bit more money, but it's worth it few of those right here and I'm barely touching but what this does is it gives it a little bit of cohesiveness a little bit of color harmony where you see it in one place you put it in another place and you know I've got it all over the place here I don't here in the mid ground I've got it in you know places here and there okay I'm gonna leave this on here and I'm gonna go to this one and go back to the French ultramarine Viridian and ivory black, what's left. I'm going to pick out some areas. I'm just going to put dark stuff growing up. The reason I do this is variety. It's nature. Nature's all over the damn place. And you go to the Arboretum, you go to the Forest Reserves, you go anywhere. You're going to see that variety all over the place on full display. Mother Nature just does what Mother Nature wants it to do. And then we are arrogant enough to think we can actually copy it in a painting. I actually don't. I know that, you know, it's my version of perfection. Mother Nature is perfect. I'm not. So it's my version of it. Okay, so I'm going to tap in a few flowers here and there with that same mix. We are just about done. It's a little bit longer painting than I normally do. Okay, I'm gonna take our fan brush. I'm just gonna go right on the bottom. Wherever it looks like it's not quite laid into the ground. I'm just going to tap it so it looks like it's in the ground. And then I'm going to take some here and just move it up. Here we go. And that, my friends, is it. As a little long winded today. Oof, by about 20 minutes, I apologize. But I hope you enjoyed this painting. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that uh, little bell notification because I've been pretty good over the last several months about uh, every Sunday having a new oil painting uh, video. And again, remember, this one is water mixable oils and conventional oils mixed together, as you can see. Beautiful. So everybody have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy your week coming up. And I will see you all next Sunday. Take care.